afternoon, girls. It's Miss Louise and Miss Mally. We're back again. That's right. We've been told yes. that we need to smile and cheery, cheery, cheery. So everybody put on a big cheery That's face. Right. Speak up here. Yes, and we have to speak up, don't we, yes. Mally? Yes. Yes. My husband it sits on the sidelines, girls, in case y'all want to know, and he's pretending to be the director. And... Um, I'm about ready to fire my director and send no, him on to another no, job. No, no, no. You want to no, keep no, him? No, no, mm -hmm. I want to keep him. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to continue with our study in the Word on who we are in Christ Jesus. And yes. uh, we may be repetitive on some things. We may go back over some things. But you know what? I never know who is new, who has not really comprehended or got it. Right. And Peter said, it is to your advantage, basically, that I go over and over again. Um, you know, when I was first learning about the word of faith and about what faith was, Mally, it was like gibberish. That's I, correct. I mean, it just didn't penetrate. It was sort of like, what? And I have a lot of verses that I go over and over and over and over. And some, some of, for some reason, I seem to forget about what I, what I need to know. So, that, I mean, yeah. I don't think it hurts to, no. to go over and to... Yeah. So, the things. first time that I heard it, I was, like, so confused. Right. But uh, that's why I want to keep going over and over again so we can have a, a real deep understanding. I right. have some verses here. Uh, that we've talking about in Ephesians, and there are some other areas in the Bible, in Corinthians, and Romans, and Colossians, talking about who we are that have been invested in us when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior. And I'm going to let Mally read some of these. That is the main thing I wanted you to say, yes. Now, this, what she's talking about is, these are the benefits that we receive when we are born again. And we will talk about that a little bit right at the end. But that's why it's so imperative to be born again because it's just amazing the benefits that we have. Yes, ma'am. So you know, there's a do? story. I tell it, uh, Mally, and I know it, you've heard it. And probably if you've right, been in the jail long enough, some of you girls have heard it too. But it just presses the point about realizing what our inheritance is right. and what we have in Christ. There was a lady in England, and she had worked as a housekeeper for a very, very, very wealthy lady. And uh, she did not know how to read. She was Ill illiterate. And when the woman died, she was by her bed, and the woman gave her a piece of paper. And not knowing how to read, she just took the piece of paper, had it framed, and put it on her wall. And in the meantime, she was in dire poverty. She was really, really uh, up the creek without a paddle, so to speak. And when she died and they came to her house to get her, they were going through her things, and they saw this piece of paper on the wall, and guess what it was? It was the will, the last testament, the last will and testament of this very wealthy lady that she worked for. And she had inherited this whole estate. And nobody could find her. And she didn't even know that she had all of these belongings and all of this inheritance. And so the point is, we have been given an inheritance. That's correct. Okay? Okay. And if you, but you have to know how to read what the will says. You have to read the will to find out what you have inherited. Otherwise, you'll never appropriate it. That's right. Right? That's correct. All right, so let's start off here. Well, well, the first one we've got here is we're, we're justified. That means we're declared not guilty of sin. And that's the very first thing you do when you become born again, you re recognize that you are, you ask forgiveness of your sin. You ask Father God to forgive you of your sins. And, and then all you that's all you have to do is ask for forgiveness. And, and it says here, then we're justified, we're declared not guilty mm -hmm. after we do that. And then the next one is, no condemnation awaits us. So where there's no condemnation in Christ <coughs> Jesus. We, because we're when you're born again, you you there's no you're not condemned anymore. The world condemns you, but Jesus doesn't. 
You know, that's so important. I'm just going to stop with that one right now and talk about this no condemnation because so often, particularly in your situation, and it doesn't have to be in your situation, it was in my situation, any of us, when you grow up with a sin consciousness, correct. when you grow up feeling that you're just a poor sinner saved by grace and that you'll never be anything but a sinner, right. when you grow up feeling condemned all the time, you don't have the boldness to go before God's throne and petition the Father for your needs. That's right. You just don't. If you Mm -hmm. If you feel condemned, you're not going to him. You just feel like you're so lowly. Right? Yeah, and you're not going to go there in faith. And no. so what Satan does is he takes our past mistakes, all the things that we've done in the past, and he will bring them up in front of you all the time. Right. He does that with me. Do you remember when you did blah, blah, blah? Or do you remember when you said such and such? Or do you remember when... Well, let me tell you something. The Bible says that once we go to 1 John 1, 9, after we're born again, and we ask God to forgive us of our sins, He not only forgives, but He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And that good. means God doesn't remember. He doesn't remember this past. So why are you bringing it up? So I want you to, re to start realizing that when Satan brings your past up in front of you, you put it under the blood of Jesus. You say, Satan, I'm sorry, I'm not that person anymore. I have asked God to forgive me. He doesn't remember it. I'm not going to remember it. I'm moving on. Don't let your past dictate your present or your future. Okay? The next one, it says, we are set free from the law of sin and death because when you sin, it's going to bring on death. If, mm -hmm. if, you're, not, if you're not born again, if you are born again, you see that you are set free from the law because it's just a law. I'm just going to tell you the truth. That's why y'all are in there is because of the law. I mean, you, you did something that you shouldn't have done, and, then, and because of the law, you were put in jail. So that then, but in... Christ Jesus, we're set free from the law of sin and death. Let's do a, a really kind of a quick tutorial here on what the law is under the old covenant right. and what, what we are under grace. Correct. That's under right. the old covenant, God gave the Ten Commandments and he gave the law so that the people would know, number one, that they had sinned. You know, if you're right. driving down the highway and there's no sign telling you how fast to go, you can go as fast as you want right. to, right? Right. So they, they weren't aware of their sins. And number two, the law was there to point them for their need for Jesus. The law was like a yardstick. It was like a schoolmaster. It was meant to point them toward Christ. What they did, though, was they ended up taking the law, the schoolmaster, and making it their salvation. It was never meant to say nobody could keep the law. You couldn't do it. It was impossible. But that's why Jesus came to fulfill the law in him so that once you're born again and you are in him, he gives you his ability to fulfill the law, to fulfill the commandments. And therefore, you're not under condemnation because you're walking now by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives and indwells in you. And that's called grace. And you know, Mally, we tend to, as human beings, we want to put ourselves back under the law sometimes. That is so true. <laughs> That is so true. And, and, you know, some people have said to me, <coughs> well, Louise, I don't, uh, I don't cuss and I don't chew and I don't smoke and I don't hang around with those that do. I don't look at other women. I've never committed adultery. Uh, I go to church every Sunday and every Sunday night and I don't do this and I don't do that. And I keep every rule and ordinance. And you know what you've done? You have put yourself back under the law. Yes, you have. 
you've taken yourself out of grace and put yourself back under the law. And you've become legalistic. Okay? And God never wanted you to be legalistic. He wants you to operate under grace. His power. What Christ has done for you. And you see, you have one job. And that's to study His Word. And to apply it as He has appropriated it. And let Christ develop Himself in you. And uh, He'll take care of all these other things. Where we are sanctified and made acceptable in Jesus Christ. I think I'll read these two together. And we are righteous and holy in Christ. So we're talking about righteousness and sanctification. Righteousness is that means that we have the right to stand before God free of guilt, free of condemnation as his children. That's right. And we're made righteous when we be actually believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And that's how you become righteous, and then that's how you also become sanctified. Okay, and it says, we will be made alive at the resurrection. Well, that will take place after the tribulation. You're going to have the rapture of the church, and the church will be taken out of here, okay? You will get a glorified body, so then this body, this flesh that's giving you trouble all this time will be Taken out of the picture, you'll get a new glorified body. Right. And at that point in time is when you'll be glorified. That's right. And all, but the next one says that we are new creatures, which oh. is very interesting. We literally become new creatures. Okay, now that doesn't mean that your hair, you're going to have, if you're blind, you're going to be redheaded. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything's going to change physically. It's going to mean that your spirit. It's your spirit they're talking about there. Your spirit becomes brand new. You're just totally, completely renewed. Amen. So what's the next one? We receive God's righteousness. Yeah, so, it's mm -hmm. not our righteousness. You see, self-righteous, have you ever heard of people being self-righteous? Oh, nothing stinks in the God nostrils of God like that. more than man's self-righteousness. Uh, and Amen. so we can't lean on our self-righteousness and our ability. We accept what Jesus has done for us. We take on his righteousness and we allow that to become part of ourselves physically. And we are one in Christ with all other believers. That means we become part, your, you know, of course you have your blood family. But mm -hmm. this, that means you have a family and you have a big family because oh. you are become you're part of the family of God. You may not like everybody in your family, but let me tell you something. Before you start pointing a finger at the person that you don't think adds up, be careful because they're probably pointing a finger back at you. So we need to learn how to get along. Somebody said to me one time, well, I really only pick friends that I kind of jihad with. Well, you know what? Sometimes God puts us with people that are just opposite That's of us. So we learn how to work with one another, right? That's correct. We're all one in Christ. That means black, white, brown. What doesn't doesn't make any difference. We're all one in Christ. Okay, we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Boy, that's a mouthful. I'll every say. spiritual blessing Woo. in Christ. Wow. That, that means like you that don't you like do not come up lot. short in anything. Every spiritual blessing. If you want to be have, have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, if you need it, you can get it. You yeah. have it, it's yours. Yeah, You're blessed. Okay, we are holy, blameless, and covered with God's love. Ooh. Holy and blameless and covered. We need to learn how to take a bath in God's love. Let it just right. soak all the way through us. Amen. Just Amen. soak Amen. it up. Amen. That's what it's all about. Why did, why did Jesus come in the first place? The first. You know why he came? He came to reconcile us to the to his Father. That you may have life and you may and have it more like abundantly. That, right. That he actually came that we may have life the God kind of life, and that's the life of God, which you just said, the life, 
and life more abundantly. So that is, he, that's what he literally said. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So it, he, he is interested in us, in us and he wants us to. Well, God is a, love and he wants blessings. us to take on his character. That's correct. That's correct. Oh, this is a good one right here. We're adopted as God's children. Oh, yeah. Somebody thinks, sometimes you hear about adopted and you think, oh, well, th a, you know, that's a second-hand kid. No, it's not. It's actually, a, it's somebody that the parents went out and went out of their way correct. to actually Let me tell you, get adopted that person children should never, never feel, feel second-hand. They no. need to feel like they're the most special in the whole world because God... Yeah, I know people because, that have you know, gone they through They could have been aborted and they were not. I mean, they got to look at it that way. Look, I could have been aborted. There's so many abortions, but they would, I was not aborted and I was given to a family because my mother cared enough about me to carry me for nine months. And let me tell you, girls, I know most of y'all have children, but I mean, the ones of y'all that don't, I mean, there's something to carrying a child for nine months and, and then it's also something to give it up. I mean, it was quite a very special mother to do that. Okay. Did you, you want to say something else about mm -hmm. adoption? Did you say something, I mean, about uh, adoption one time? Yeah. Just... In the state of Florida, if you have an adopted child, you cannot disinherit them. Right, that's right. Legally. That's what it was. But you, um, you can disinherit your own natural child, but you cannot disinherit your adopted child. And so what that tells me, if God has adopted me, he is not going to disinherit me. Legally, he cannot disinherit me. So, That's right. girls, I'm going to tell cannot. you, I don't care how bad you may end up doing things you may end up doing, how bad you feel. Let me tell you something. You've got a father that's going to stick by you all the way through. He will never leave you. Now, you may walk away from him, but he'll never walk away from you. That's correct. Now, we've talked about this a little bit already, about it. our sins are taken away and we are forgiven. And the deal is, is you talked about it. you're not an old sinner saved by grace. You know, God is, we ask forgiveness of our sins. And then if you, and if, then if you mess up, then you can repent. You can turn around and ask God, you know, forgive me or whatever. But, I mean, it's not like we're, we're not sinners. But we, but we have, but that's it. We are we are forgiven. Mm -hmm. We are forgiven. That's right. We're forgiven. Praise and, the Lord. you know, nothing feels worse than to, to go to somebody and say, you know, can't, will you forgive me because I, I know I did wrong. And then right, they, absolutely. And Man, then they so. look at you like you just one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And there's I mean, no way that they're going to forgive you. You know, hell yeah. would freeze over before they forgive it you. It doesn't really matter if they do or not, but you've done your part. It but I'll correct. tell you what, you'll never get that kind of reception from God. That's true. Never. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we will be brought under Christ's headship. Christ is the head, we are the body, and Satan is under our feet. Absolutely. But not but not if you're not born again. No. But we he's are the, the body of, the, of the Christ. God of the world. world. He's the God of this world. Amen. We are the body of Jesus Christ. And he is. We're under his headship. He's the head. Speaking of that... Um, I want to go to Ephesians while we're right there at the yeah. body, okay? Yeah. It, if you got you got your Bibles, uh, and by the way, if y'all are lacking Bibles, if you will tell the jailer, jailers and let them get word back to um, the ones in charge, we will see that y'all get Bibles, okay? Uh, we'll bring them to the jail. And they can pass them out. So we don't want anybody to go without a Bible. In Ephesians chapter 6, Mally, you got your Bible? You want to turn there? I'll sure do it. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about that we are to put on the whole armor of God. We're talking here about being the body of Christ. Jesus is the head, but we are the body. In other words, we are Christ in this earth today. We are Christ in this earth today. I told somebody the other day, I said, you know what? You probably are the only Jesus some people will ever see. 
because they're not going to go out and read their Bibles, okay? But what they're going to look at is how you handle every situation in life. And before you go talking to somebody and preaching to them, be sure that you're leading and walking the life that you're talking about because I guarantee you they're looking. They are looking. That's correct. One of the things it says in the armor of God is, um, and Paul gets a lot of his, um, what do you want to say, descriptions? Metaphors. Uh, metaphors mm -hmm. from um, the Roman Roman guards, the Roman soldiers. Roman, Roman legions, yeah. And so mm -hmm. this is where he comes from on this. And he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now, he didn't say here in the power of your might because in your own power, you don't have any might. You don't. But with his might, you can do anything. He says to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Somebody said to me the other day, Mally, they said, do you know how many... that?" There are a lot of people that don't believe in the Isn't devil. That amazing? Trent, I think you said that, that. There are a lot of people that really don't even believe that the devil is real. Well, I got a news flash for you. He's very real. Amen. He is, is very real. and he is very active. And he is really kicking his heels up. I think we are so close to the end times that he is he's pulling everything out um right now. And so he says that we um may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. One of the things I want to bring out here is this. When somebody does something to you, or says something, or acts a certain way, you need to stop and realize you're not dealing with that person. You're dealing with the spirit behind Amen. that individual. Absolutely. And it's so, that is so important, Louise. That statement is very powerful that you just made. When you realize who you're dealing with, it says not flesh and blood. We're not dealing with flesh and blood. We're if dealing someone with... says something to you, I mean, I was talking about how close quarters, what close quarters y'all have, and I, it's so difficult to not get offended. Mm-hmm. But, and just what you said, if someone says something to you that offends you, realize that that is really not the person. It's amazing. Because, but they're, because they're really being controlled by this principality and power that you're talking about. Exactly. And so, then, just realize who's behind it, okay? Right. So, Wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is so important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In Ephesians 6. And so, he says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Amen. I want you to underline that last word. When you have done everything that God has asked you to do and you are in faith to the maximum ability that you know you have, right. stand, be Amen. still, and let God fight your battle. And so he says here, when you've done everything to do, it didn't say sit down. It didn't say go to bed and pull the covers over your head. And I want to tell you something, guys. You know, Mally and I are out here teaching this word. And um, we are in a spiritual warfare. You know, That's Satan's correct. coming for us. That's right. He's coming at, at every, us. At every because, turn. because he goes for the ones that are operating in faith and putting the word out there. Because that's the threat. And I want to know, I told Mally the other day, I said, man, it has gotten rough sometimes. I wake up in the mornings and I just want to pull the covers over my head. head. It's a heaviness. Yeah. It's a spirit of heaviness. It's really a spirit of heaviness. It's all I can do, seriously, just to want to get out of that bed. You just want to, you just want to go, oh, if I could just crawl into bed, put the covers over my face and eat a pizza. I don't know why I said that, but I just thought, well, you know, I'm just satisfying my, words, my flesh. In other, other words, words, stay there for where you, and, and don't get up and then do what he wants you to do. Right. So and what's your calling, in other words, just yeah. do what he wants you to do. And so we, we're called to, to do all that we can do and stand. Now here it says right here, I see you point that out, to stand. 
And then he repeats himself. What does he say then? Stand. Stand again. Stand. Therefore. Stand. Stand some more. Having girded your waist with truth. Amen. That's the first thing is the truth. What is the truth? The Jesus word. Christ is the son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. You know what a breastplate does? It covers your heart. It covers your That's vital correct. organs. It covers because the, right. the vital organs That's of correct. all is That's what correct. that breastplate covers. Mm -hmm. It covers those vital organs. Correct. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know that is? That's going about telling people what Jesus has done. That's today. correct. And I'm just gonna tell you, when you when you get when you're born again, girls. The real peace will come. That's the only way. Mm -hmm. The real peace. And, and you need to walk in and it. it. And walking in peace is glorious. <laughs> it really is, Melly. Um, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. You know, some people think when they get born again that suddenly all their problems end. And I, I mean, you know, I like some of these TV ministers, but some of them just make me want to gag. <laughs> because all they talk about is, oh, we're off in La La Land, and we're all right. just going to be flying here on the sky. It's going to be wonderful. Woo, 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 woo. Well, that's and not I, the way it is. Absolutely not. You know Matter what? of fact, you want to find out what problems are, get born again. Get I hate to again. tell you that, but, but that's the truth. And then that's when the wiles of the devil are going to come after you. But you've got all this. You, you've got you, this is who you are. Just talking about it. It's like the spirit of heaven. You recognize it was the spirit of heaven. And that's when you cast it out in the name of Jesus. And that's what you'll have to do, girls, is to use the word of God and cast let it me, out. Let me tell you an example of, of this armor. Um. There are two things I want you to know, and we're going to close this down pretty soon. But I don't know me how many of y'all ever saw the movie The Gladiator. Did you ever see the movie The oh, Gladiator? Gosh, yes, I saw the Gladiator. Oh, I love that. Absolutely. And the thing that that really jumped out at me in that movie was that when when they were the the Roman army were moving as a force against the enemy. Okay. Um, it just blew me away because they had these, it talks about the breastplate of righteousness and the shield. Right. This shield actually went from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. We think of it as being little, but it didn't. It covered That's their right. whole body. That's right. And it went from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. And when they were all gathered as one, the ones in the middle put their shields over their heads. For the air as they're coming down And like the ones in front had the mm -hmm. shields here and the ones on the side had their shields here and the ones in the back I guess they walked backward I don't know I didn't see that part but I know that when they shot the fiery darts they couldn't get through to them because they bounced off these shields That's it right. was like a moving That's force right. that came forward and I even heard that they soak them in water so when the fire comes it's just not going to be able to penetrate either because a lot of them were made of wood See, yeah. So those fire darts were not able to. And so I thought that was interesting because uh, we are to put up our shield. That's correct. And then he says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The helmet covers your head, your mind, right. your mind. Let me tell you something, guys. If we've ever needed to put our helmets Amen. on, we need to put them on today. And be born again. Amen. Because we need to com constantly Amen. renew our mind to the Word of God. That's correct. Because when you have all this negative stuff coming at you 24-7, all this, well, you're never going to get out. You're never going to make your bail. You're going to da-da-da-da-da-da-da, all this stuff. How If you get out, where are you going to live? How are you going to pay your bills? Yada, 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 yada. This is where you put on the Word of God. This is where you renew your mind to the Word of God. You say, Jesus said that he would, what? Pay all my bills. Great. That he would that he would take care of me in every situation. That there's nothing that can come against me that could defeat me as long as God is on my side. That's right. Praying always with all supplication in the spirit that take your burdens to the Lord. Give them to him. He wants them. He mm -hmm. wants them. 
He mm -hmm. wants to take your burdens. The Word of God is like a Roman sword. It's referred to in the Bible as a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reasons this sword for the Romans was so successful was prior to the Romans coming up with this particular sword, they had these huge swords that were so big and so heavy, it took two hands to hold them. They would draw them up over their heads like this, and yes, if you got in their way, they could really slice you in two. But the whole point was, as long as you had this sword up here, you were kind of defenseless. The Romans came along with this little sword, about this this big, and uh, the uh, the enemy would look at that and go, are you kidding me? What are they going to do with that? Mm -hmm. But while they had their sword up, the Romans came along and went, sliced them up. Ch just like because that. it was very, mm -hmm. very easy to use, and it changed the way they did warfare. And not only was that sword good for defeating the enemy, but they used it for chopping wood. They used it for killing their game. They used it for paring their meals. That's right, cleaning. They used it for right. everything mm -hmm. they did. In other words, that sword was so powerful and so useful. God's Word is like that. It's not one-sided. It's two-edged. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And it has a sharp point on the end. And if we take it up, we can go. Ch -ch -ch. That's how powerful the Word of God is. And we can use yes, the Word for everything we need Every for life and godliness. Amen. There everything. Right there. Whether it's your food, whether it's your needs for your home, whether it's paying your bills. Let me tell you something, people. We can't look to the government. We can't look Amen. to other people. You have to learn to look to God. That's correct. And we're coming to that point right, right now. And I want to mention also before we get off that it's so important about not having any unforgiveness in your heart. That you use your sword girls to get rid of unforgiveness. And I will have to say, you know, how I have told you in the past is I receive forgiveness for having unforgiveness in my heart. The reason that you receive Forgiveness for having unforgiveness is because Jesus in the Lord's Prayer has told us to give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then he tells us, I don't even hear your prayers if you have unforgiveness. So I just wanted to bring it up. It's so important about not having any unforgiveness. But if you receive forgiveness for having unforgiveness because Jesus has told you not to have any unforgiveness, he's given you away. And then if you say, I forgive after that, then it's amazing. It's amazing how you can forgive, and it's just when it brings up and you think you don't think about it again, you don't have the feelings anymore. You truly can forgive. And, and some people say, well, Louise, I don't know. I, I, I said I forgave that person, but every time their name comes up, I just shudder. And so maybe I haven't forgiven them. No, let, you know what? you got to give your flesh some time to catch up to your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because if you said in your spirit, in good faith, God, I want to forgive this person, I forgive them. You know, you just keep saying that, and every time that person's name comes up, you say, God, bless them. Amen. Bless That's them. Exactly. If you just do, bless if, them. If you do that, then they And after a while, them. Satan will quit bringing that person that up in the, front of you because that's the last thing he wants you to do is it'll be pray amazing that God how bless you can them. Even, it's amazing. I mean, the supernatural, you can actually, people say, well, how can I can never forget it? <laughs> well, you can. You really, you really yeah. can. It'll be so low in your life, you're not even going to, it's not going to be important. It's a, God's so good. He is. I want to end today, before we leave, by having a prayer for salvation. Um, I never like to close out any of these sessions because I'm never sure who's, who's listening and if we have new girls in. And I just don't, I don't, the most important thing that Mally and I can say to any of y'all at any point in time is that you need to receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Because without Jesus, you're lost. And you need to know that if you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, you will for, forever live in eternity with the Father. And there is a heaven and there is a hell. 
And I don't know that we talk about hell because we think it's not politically correct. But I'm going to tell you something, guys. God's not politically correct. He's just correct. And he wants you to know that he wants you to avoid hell Amen. and gain heaven. And the devil wants to take as many. He wants to take as many with him as he can. So I'm going to pray this prayer. And then I want you to pray it along with me. And as you do, realize that you're asking Jesus into your heart. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for my sins, that he rose on the third day. I believe it in my heart, and I am confessing him as my Lord and Savior with my mouth. And I believe today that I am now in the family of God. And if you've prayed this prayer, I can assure you, you are in our family. Amen. 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 We'll see you next week. And next week we're going to be talking uh, in the area of how powerful the word is in your life, but how powerful your words in your mouth are in accomplishing what God wants to do in your life. All right? Amen. So we'll see you next week. Goodbye.